what's happening. Inner turn shorts. These are, again, the two windings in the stator getting shorted together. So when you short two windings together, you get big currents. Big currents mean there's stuff we can measure, so that's cool. We can measure current disturbances. We can look at what we call the zero sequence voltage. That's basically um, what's not useful. <laughs> where, where are currents hiding where they're not useful? It's a mathematical transform we use to look at basically what the, what the neutral currents are. Um, so we can look at that zero sequence voltage or current. And in my example down here, um, I have normal operation of zero sequence voltage where we see that black line, not a big sine wave. And I have a couple different faults and we can see a really big zero sequence or a ne sorry, negative sequence um, voltage and current. So this is pretty dramatic. This is a really good indicator and we can watch this creep over time. If we start to have a little short, we can see this. And over time is relative, but you know, 50 seconds before a major fault, you can see that start to creep. That's really good information. We also look at phase imbalance. Phase one, phase two, and phase three are gonna look drastically different when we start introducing short circuit faults. And I will show an example of this a little later. We'll see increases in harmonic amplitude in both the phase currents and the zero sequence voltage. So again, I have a, um, a diagram here of a FFT of my zero sequence voltage. And we can see that at the third order or the third harmonic, for a healthy motor, we have you know, a, a given harmonic spectrum. And then for the two turns and the four turns shorts, we can see that like, all right, in my fundamental, I have a huge increase in harmonics. In my third harmonic, I have a pretty big increase in harmonic just from those turn to turn shorts. So we can start to look at those. So that's cool. We have some really good indicators and multiple indicators that show us, hey, a failure is happening. And then if we have enough of these, we can start to identify why is that failure happening and where is that failure happening? This might tell me I have a turn to turn short. This and this might tell me I have a you know turn to turn short in phase one. There are also other measurements we can use to start to predict turn to turn shorts. We can have a data-driven version where we, where we use big data. We can have high-frequency injections. That's more of an online technique. We can have model-based, where we have a model running in parallel. That can be offline or online. And then we have vibration analysis, where we can actually look at how that machine is, is vibrating. Um, so some cool methods, and we can start to figure out not only if a fault is happening, 